Chris Day from Coloring Pages Bliss and I'd like to welcome you to this video where we're going to discuss Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds. It's a great technique that I use all the time to blend one of my favorite coloring tools, color pencils. Now, I would like to invite you to visit my website, coloringpagesbliss.com, where you can find a three-page worksheet that will take and break down the steps and all these tips and techniques that I will be covering in this two-part video series. So let's get started. Now I've got here three color pencils by Prismacolor. They're Premier Pencils and I'm going to write down the colors for you right now. So if you want to follow along and try this at home, you can. So let me write these down for you. The great thing about Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds is that you don't need any solvents or any other tools. All you need are your color pencils. And this works for any brand of color pencils. I'll be demonstrating three different brands in this video. Um, right now we're going to use our Prismacolor Premier Pencils. And the first step that you do is with your lightest tone, we're going to cover the entire area of the shape that you're coloring. Now, um, you want to use light pressure. If you have trouble with um, coloring with light pressure, if you're heavy handed with your color pencils, a great trick is to move your hand towards the back of your color pencil. This will automatically help you to be lighter with your coloring. Okay, the second step of Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds is to move to your second pencil, which is your medium tone, and color two-thirds of the area that you're coloring. Again, use light pressure. Now, um, the reason we're using light pressure is because we want to work with layers here. Color pencils are their best when you use light layers. You can build up lots of tones and create your mistakes and uh, work along slower so that um, your hand doesn't get as tired when you work in light layers. Okay, next step is to move to your darkest of the three pencils that we've chosen here. And we're going to do the last third in this dark tone. Now, if you've noticed as I've been coloring, I've been using consistent strokes. They've all been going this direction. Now, um, there's lots of different ways to color with your color pencils. Some people do tiny little circles. Um, others um, do strokes like I'm doing now. It really depends on the shape that you're coloring and the effect that you're after. Because my shape is a nice big open rectangle, I've been able to do nice big open strokes. But they are light and always consistent, or at least as consistent as possible. So keep that in mind with your coloring at all times. You want to be pretty consistent with your strokes. It will give your work a really nice, neat, professional look. All right, next step is to go back now to your medium tone, and we're going to color over two thirds again. And what this is going to do is bring together your dark and your medium tone and blend them together beautifully and put a little bit more of your pigment down. It's going to be beautiful. All right, those two have blended together really nice. Final step is to go back to your lightest tone and go over the entire space again. And this is going to do your final blend, bring all three colors together. Now in this example, I picked three colors that were of the same family, just different tones, light, medium, and dark. And um, I usually pick three colors when I'm using Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds because they work together so nicely. There you have it. And that is the basics of Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds. Isn't that beautiful? So now we're going to go on and show you some more tricks on Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds. First off, I want to show you what happens if we change out just one of these pencils. Now, this one is what we're going to do here. We're going to change out this pencil for this pink. And I'm going to show you what happens and um, show you the big difference just changing one pencil in the trio makes. 
Okay, first step is to color the entire shape with your first tone. In this case, we're using this really lovely pink color. This is hot pink in the Prismacolor Premier set. Okay, now you use your mid-tone to do two-thirds of the rectangle. And finally, we'll move to our darkest color, which is cerulean blue, and do the last third of the rectangle in this color. Look how pretty that pink is looking. Back to your middle tone and bring together your dark and middle tone by going over two thirds of your shape. And finally, we're coming back to the hot pink and going over the entire this shape. This has got to be my favorite part of, this, of the entire um, set of rules because you get to see the final effect. And especially when you're doing a combination like this where you've thrown in a fun color like this pink, this final step um, really changes the whole look of the combination. You never quite know what you're gonna get. All right. Look how pretty that turned out. Changing just one pencil changed the whole feel of that combination. Now on the worksheets you can download on my website, I've provided a space where you can practice putting together different combinations and see what your pencils can do. It's a really fun thing to do, especially if you don't feel like taking on an entire art project or an entire coloring page. Just sit down with your pencils and do some combinations. It's a great way to practice your blending and a great way to find out what your pencils can do. Okay, I wanna show you what other pencils can do, not just Prismacolors, um, because this Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds works great for different brands. So let's go ahead and bring out a school grade brand here. This is my Crazy Art Pencils. I've chosen three greens. This would be a really beautiful combination if you were working on some leaves or ferns on a coloring page. So let me write these colors down for us. Okay, I'm gonna follow the same steps that I've described with the Prismacolor pencils here with my Crazy Art pencils. Um, as you're going to see here with the Crazy Art pencil, the biggest difference between these and the other two brands that we'll be demonstrating is that they have less pigment, that means less color. So as I'm coloring with them, um, you'll see that we get less impact for every stroke that I lay down. If you're feeling discouraged by the results you're getting with your blending with your pencils no matter what brand of pencil you have one thing you can look at right away is the type of paper you're using paper for color pencils needs to have some texture in the art world it's called tooth my favorite paper that I'm using right now that I love because it has a great tooth and it also will go through my printer, which is fantastic. Not all art paper will go through my printer. Okay, here I'm working on the final step with my Crazy Art pencils, and you can see we got a beautiful blend. Of course, it's not going to be as stunning of a blend because we are working with a school grade pencil, but as you can see, you can still get a beautiful blend using Jennifer's rule of blending thirds. Okay, for the final square, I wanted to demonstrate how the Faber-Castell polychromos work. And we're going to talk a little bit about the white specks that you're going that you see over here with the Prismacolor Premier. Final step of Jennifer's rule of blending thirds with my Faber-Castell polychromos and it's turning out beautiful. I wanted to show you that an oil-based color pencil works wonderful with this blending technique. Look how beautiful those three colors came together. So pretty. Wouldn't that be beautiful on a flower? So pretty. 
Okay, so let's talk about these white flecks. Basically what you're seeing here is because this paper has a tooth or a texture, we're seeing the bottom parts of the paper or the valleys of the paper. And what that means is that there's still room for that paper to hold more pigment and wax and oils of the pencils. So we could keep layering if we wanted to. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you some really cool shortcuts and tricks that will help get rid of these little white specks. Plus, it helps speed up the process of Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds. Color pencil art in general is a slow process, but what I'm gonna show you in part two will speed it up a bit and make for a more dynamic color. I'm really excited to show you these tricks. Um, I also wanted to show you that here on the Crazy Art sample, you can't see those white specks. And the reason is, is with these pencils, I had to push harder to get the pigment to lay down. Now, like I said, there's more filler and less pigment in these pencils. So I had to use more pressure and go over the paper more times in order to get the colors to lay lay down and get this pretty blend that we ended up with. And so those ridges and teeth of the paper got squashed down. It's called burnishing. And we ended up with a nice blend, but now there's no more room for more layers on top. Now, let me show you, if I wanted to get rid of the white specks here and I didn't want to use any other tools, I just wanted to use my original three pencils. What I would do now is go back and repeat Jennifer first rule of blending thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the bottom half of this shape to demonstrate to you how it's done without using any of my shortcuts that I'm going to show you in part two of this series. So let's hit fast forward and see the results of repeating Jennifer's rule of thirds on this sample. There you can see the difference of what it looks like going through the steps once and then repeating them a second time. All those teeth are all filled in now. They're all pretty much squashed down or burnished down. Beautiful blend between the three colors. Really vibrant and dense colors is so gorgeous. But there's no more room now. We couldn't layer in more colors or add more details if we wanted to because all those teeth are filled up. But isn't that gorgeous? Okay, now make sure you join me for part two because I'm going to bring out some really cool tricks to show you what we can do now with Jennifer's rule of blending thirds to take it to the next level. See you in part two. Bye-bye.